Hi, I'm Vanessa and I love bad Star Trek. I will be the lie burning through the dead body that is season one of Star Trek's Next Generation. Today, I will be talking to you about an episode called Too Short a Season. An episode that asks the question, what happens when you try to turn a raisin into a grape? When you turn wine into a grape, a football into a pig, a weft into a wig. You know what I mean? Cher did. She knew damn well how to be kind and rewind. Is this, is this rap now? Am I rapping? <laughs> I mean, it asks the question, but the answer we get is written in crayon because this complex question of the bioethics of age reversal is answered by an actor who is, um, not the most capable. A plot being a flimsy springboard for a fantastic performance can be forgivable. I think that is what Data Lore was attempting to do and Brent Spiner playing Lore, a not as fleshed out character as Data was not great, but I still think he can carry an episode. Unlike the gentleman that they cast for this who is very heavily featured. And the plot feels like it was really rushed, like written within a lunch hour. And what I find funny about it is the things that I think don't make sense, Picard repeatedly gives voice to. He is literally saying, why is this even happening? Like a Greek chorus giving voice to a writer in the writer's room maybe, who is continuously going, man, what the fuck are we even doing? And on a personal note, I am turning 37 in about five or six weeks, depending on when I post this. The idea of aging is certainly taking up more and more real estate in my mind. 37 means I'm about halfway dead I think, one foot in my watery grave and the other on terra firma doing this. <laughs> but you never know when your body is more amusement park than temple. Mind eraser. <laughs> the cold open feels less like a setup that intrigues you and draws you in to continue watching than it is a sprint to fit in as much exposition as possible in the short time allotted. This show is 45 minutes long, there's no need to do this. But basically, uh, a there's this dude, Governor Karnas, who's like, hey, we have a hostage situation over here at the hands of dissidents. I can't handle this. We need Starfleet to get over here with a specific admiral, Admiral Mark Jameson. And he needs to be here within six days or the hostages are gonna die. <laughs> Very serious shit. It's very serious. Serious. But it's a suspiciously specific request, you know? Even but cards like, why him? Why six days? Why can't Karnas himself deal with this situation? And we get the answer that Jameson successfully negotiated some other thing 45 years ago. Oh, okay, so what? That's not really an answer. And I have a few questions myself. The transmission, according to Starfleet, is already two days old. And so they only really have four days to bring this guy. Why not just put his ass on the view screen with these dissidents? It's the future. They clearly have FaceTime. None of this is even necessary. Don't need to physically be there. And you have to wonder, is this all just pretense to get their hands on Admiral Mark Jameson's famous chocolate chip cookie recipe? Do they need another team member for their wet t-shirt contest at Senor Frogs on spring break? Like what's the real deal? So anyway, Admiral Mark Jameson looks like he's made of hamburger meat. The makeup looks like someone just slammed the actor's face into a meatloaf. He can't display any expressions because of the prosthetic on his forehead. And the first thing I thought when I saw this was, you know, why don't they just get an actually 85 year old man to play this guy? But on top of that, what he's doing with his mouth, you know, and that's not something you do unless you don't have teeth. It's not like you turn a certain age and you suddenly lose control of your lips. Then his jaw looks like a trapeze, but one of the ropes is untied, you know, like, I honestly didn't understand that this was 
meant to be seriously interpreted as an actually old person. It looked more like a parody or a puppet. And then he and his wife beam aboard, where Jameson announces that as Admiral, he's going to command the away team. On any assignment I accompany, Starfleet has designated me senior mission officer. I control the away team and all its actions, is that understood? And that's how they end the cold open, with a very matter-of-fact declaration of how a mission will go. They just didn't think about how to make this interesting. And we later find out that he is chair-bound because he has a degenerative muscle condition called Iverson's disease, which isn't, which is not a real thing yet, but it's probably named after the basketball player. Does he know he's going to get Iverson's disease? Is he going to be like the next Lou Gehrig? I want a disease named after me. You know, I'm a pro kazoo player, so that, that should count for something. So right before the next commercial break, miraculously, he's already able to stand and walk a few steps. And after the commercial break, he's not even in the chair anymore. So already, we're like, something's fishy. Suspicious. Jameson says that he's doing some new kind of therapy, but Beverly's like, that's not possible. There's no cure for Iverson's disease. No one recovers from Iverson's disease. There's no known cure. There have been no cases where it's gone into remission. It, but according to tests, he has no trace of the disease in his body anymore. And he also looks completely different. Darling, you look like you look 20 years ago. You flatter me. So it's not just that he's beating the disease, he is aging backwards, but still not able to move his forehead <laughs> and continues having a voice that sounds like he's raved all night with no water. Very Grover, which adds to this puppet feel. He reveals that he's basically found some kind of de-aging retinol vitamin A mixed with hot monkey piss on the dark web that you're supposed to take over the course of two years, but he's decided to take it all that day. <laughs> look at me, Annie, look at me. I'm, I'm strong, I'm alert, fit, I'm fitter than you are, Colin. I'm getting younger. What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> Jameson wants his wife to take it, but she's like, no, I'm, I'm good. Then we find out, OMG, Karnas is the dissident. Wow. And he just has it out for the Admiral. Jameson tells Captain Picard that they're gonna have to Rambo those hostages out of there instead of negotiating. When Picard asks why, he's like, I'm not at liberty to say. <laughs> he was just on a secure channel with Karnas. You know, Picard should be able to put two and two together, like... So he's getting younger, physically changing every scene, and with the hostage crisis, this Admiral character is carrying a lot of emotional weight, and the actor is either overdoing it, overcompensating for his immobile face, maybe, or underdoing it because he's very monotone and only raises his voice to indicate any emotional modulation. The plot gets more strange when Jameson is like, I know where he's hiding on the planet in a tunnel exactly where he held the hostages last time. Why does he draw this conclusion? Karnas is a dogged strategist. Picard, not a brilliant one. He sticks to what works. He's a stupid man who does stupid things, Picard. <laughs> the worst written scene, which I find hysterical, is when we find out that Karnas's issue with Jameson is that the negotiation he did 45 years ago succeeded because he gave in to Karnas's demands for weapons to defeat their rivals, but then also gave weapons to the rivals. <laughs> When Picard rightfully finds it gross that he gave weapons at all because Starfleet don't do that shit. And that, that also created 40 years of civil war, bro. Not cool. Jameson is like, I didn't know that would happen. I, I thought a minor war, it would be settled in less than a year. How would I know it would take four decades? <gasps> Oh, I didn't know. You mean giving weapons to people that don't like each other didn't work out? How could that be? <laughs> I, I honestly wonder, is this some kind of sly hot take on American Cold War foreign policy? You mean 
giving guns to ideologues and militant right-wing governments is not a good idea? Oh, we had no idea. The actor is really overacting here, over-enunciating. His wife, Anne, is told by Beverly that Jameson is kind of a ticking time bomb because his physical self is unstable. By the time he's aged back to his late 30s, I think, the Grover voice is gone, the makeup is gone. I'm like, wow, he looks really familiar. And after a little look-see on IMDb, I find out that his name is Clayton Rohner. And the other role I guess he's famous for is being that cringy teen comedy, just one of the guys, as the sexually confused romantic interest who can't pronounce Cindy Lauper's name for shit. I'm a girl, I'm a woman. <laughs> right, and I'm Cindy Lauper. Now this Clayton dude, who knows, maybe he's an amazing actor by now, but at this point in the episode, it's clear he can't carry it. It's so distracting how serious he tries to be, how imposing or important, but he can't convincingly do that. And nowhere is that more apparent than when he's finally meeting Karnas After a failed rescue attempt, since his body is already starting to shut down, Karnas is like, I don't care if he's sick, get him down here, or I'm gonna execute someone every 15 minutes. <laughs> If we don't deliver Jameson in five minutes, one of the hostages will be executed. Fifteen minutes after that, another. He promises the method of execution will be most painful. You already waited six days, bro. Stop being such a baby. Like, jeez. When Picard, Beverly, and Jameson beam down there, Karnas doesn't believe that it's Jameson. This charade will accomplish nothing, Picard. Continue this, and I promise you they will die, and you with them. I'm being catfished, but in a good way, because he's so much more handsome than his profile picture. Bruh. I mean, it is weird that a much younger dude is there. And Picard's like, hey, he drank monkey piss from the dark web. I know this is a lot to take in, but that is definitely the J-Dog. This scene, though, goes on and on. This is what the drug has done to him. This story you are telling me is unbelievable. Jameson is a man of more than 80 years. The guy who plays Karnas has one emotional gear, which is angry Decepticon. It's a ham eating contest between Karnas and Jameson really, with Karnas going, Roar, I'm mad, get the real guy. And Jameson physically coming apart and groaning like a horny cat in the background. I want him to pay for that because. Ah! I love that Picard has to show Karnas a series of pictures showing Jameson's aging going backwards that day with an Instagram story, I guess. See, if I was Karnas, I would still think that this was bullshit. Photoshop 9000 is probably out by then. Instagram filters, I mean, come on. But this thing's gotta wrap up. So Jameson, looking like Robert Downey Jr. at the end of Less Than Zero, gives a speech, I guess, that does sound like his organs are imploding at that very moment. There were only two of us in the meeting. Peace wasn't on your mind. All you wanted was revenge. And I gave you the weapons to do it. And of course he's like, look at my scar, the one you gave me. Why they didn't just lead with that, I don't know. I But I wish they kept it going because scars can be fake too. Thank God this Jameson guy finally dies. <laughs> Karnas gives up the hostages and that's it. Turns out the guy from just one of the guys can't give a nuanced performance and keep you engaged for an entire episode. Ironically, Picard's character goes back to being even handed and calm but confident instead of grouchy and pointlessly rigid. Or at least it seems that way in contrast to the puppet show from Admiral Mark Jameson. I laughed so hard the whole way through, but this wasn't a comedy. This was meant to be about geopolitical conflict, ethics, 
morality, aging, regret, and revenge. Not just two men in a room going, I'm acting! No, I'm acting! <laughs> All we can do is pinch our nose and put this episode in the diaper genie. Speaking of diapers, I just wish they took this even further. Make Jameson a kid, then a baby, then a fetus in a womb, maybe a zygote, a sperm giving commands from a gonad via Vulcan mind meld, ball meld. I don't know. I don't know how that would work, but season seven has Deanna Troy turning into a frog on Genesis. If you're gonna do something stupid, go for the gold. You know? The next one is about actually younger people. I don't know if they did that as a joke, <laughs> but Lawler skates. Till next time, I guess.